What's up everyone? This is Alvin Teaches Poker and today we're going to be talking about five intermediate preflop mistakes I bet that you're making that is holding you back from being a complete crusher. This goes beyond just simple advice like don't limp. We all know that. Let's talk about a little bit more complex ideas. Also, please like and subscribe. For every subscriber I get, I will adopt one cat. So first off, you are playing too loose facing tight raisers. Now, I think usually the problem is people are just looking at preflop charts and they say, oh, the button raises and I should defend X and Y hands. But the problem is your opponents aren't playing charts themselves, they're playing too tightly. And so you need to be tightening up facing aggression in almost every preflop node. We can see that generally when you raise on the button, you should be opening about 44% of hands. However, when we look at how our opponents actually play over this small sample size, we can see that our opponents are actually raising about 34% of hands. Here, standardly, we should be calling a hand like Queen-2 suited or King-8 offsuit. However, you can see that facing a tighter raise, a hand like King-9 offsuit is now going to be a fold. So generally, if you are folding your offsuit hands one notch tighter than you normally would against a standard GTO opponent, that is going to be really enormously beneficial for your win rate. Next, you're probably playing too loosely facing a raise and a call. So very commonly, when there's a raise and a bunch of callers, you'll look down at a hand and say, oh, I'm getting really, really good pot odds. I should be calling with a lot of hands. And in fact, it, the exact opposite is true. So let's say that the under the gun raises and then it comes to us in the big blind. How should we proceed? Generally, we're going to be playing quite tight, folding about 75% of hands. However, let's say the under the gun raises and now the cutoff calls and then it folds to us. We should now be folding 5% more hands. Let's say the button calls and the small blind folds and now it comes to us and we should be folding about 4% hands more. So in general, the more players that are in the pot, the less hands that you want to continue with and more often you want to raise rather than call. Notice, and this is quite important, after the under the gun raises and there's a bunch of callers, hands like king queen offsuit, ace jack offsuit, and even ace 10 suited are not quite good enough to play. So you have to be very, very careful with your reverse implied odds Broadway type hands, which might get into a lot of post flop trouble. A lot of you are also overplaying kings and queens pre-flop, especially from under the gun. A lot of people just think when you have kings from every position, you four bet it, you get it in, and if your opponent shows you aces, it's a cooler. So we're under the gun, we raise kings, and then it folds around to the small blind who three bets us. And when the big blind folds, kings should actually be flatting here about half the time. Aces can flat a little bit, and queens should be flatting here nearly 100% of the time. This also ties in with the first leak that players are just using kind of charts and playing too aggressively compared to their much tighter opponents. And this also might be the case where our opponents are playing too tightly from the small blind and when they three bet us, we actually should be flatting more pocket kings than what GTO recommends. Another symptom of playing charts too often is that you're not isolating weak players enough. So when you are raising and you look down and you see that the big blind is very weak, you should be raising an incredibly wide range of hands. So normally if you're under the gun in the six max game, you might be opening like 16 to 18% of hands. If you see that the big blind is weak, you should probably be opening that up to as wide as 25% of hands. That's 50% more often when you see that there's a limper and it folds to you on the button and you have a hand like queen five suited, you should be relentlessly isolating your players 
irregardless of the fact that sometimes they are going to be limp calling stronger hands or even setting traps against you. So I think a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, there's this limper and he limps like uh, hands as strong as ace queen or, you know, king queen or queen 10. So when I have a hand like queen eight suited, I don't want to isolate him. Well, yes, it is possible that sometimes you're going to get into some reverse implied odd situations, but generally when you are isolating these players, they are simply going to look at their hand and check fold a ton of flops to you, and that is where a bajillion percent of your money comes from. This is also true in three bet pots. When you see that a weaker opponent has raised and you look down and find any reasonable hand, even if it feels too loose, you should be three betting your opponent much looser than what GTO recommends recommends simply to get into a post-flop situation where they will check and then fold to one of your infinitely small bets. The final mistake that I see all the time is that when you see your opponent using a non-standard pre-flop size, you still use standard sizes on your own. A perfect example is you see your opponent open 7x pre-flop and you look down with pocket aces. If you raise it to 21 big blinds because that is 3x of 7, then you have absolutely no imagination whatsoever. And so a bunch of you are mentally saying, oh, I'm feeling really seen right now because I bet when your opponents make non-standard sizes, you just continue to make a very standard size yourself. So for example, you raise 2.5 on the button, your opponent three bets you to eight and you have pocket aces. If you make that 20 big blinds, you should hate yourself. Instead, you should at least make it three times, right, by hitting pot. But really, if you go four times or even five times larger than your opponent's three bet when you have an extremely strong hand, I guarantee you, your opponent is still going to pay you because they're going to level themselves off into something ridiculous because they made a small size, or their small size actually does include a lot of strong hands and then you are going to extract maximum value with aces. But the moment you see that your opponents are playing in non-standard ways, it is a cue for you that you should begin to play in non-standard ways yourself in order to maximally exploit your opponent. Good luck, everyone.